Right now that this year of year has just come to an end, can you kind of Yo, Craig, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm good, man. Sweet. This guy just almost saw me trip and fall on a live Zoom. Okay, bet. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I can hear us okay. Uh, decently, I'm about to lean in a little bit. Okay. Uh, start with BJ, and then we'll go Ron, and then uh, Rachel. Do you have something? Okay, we'll go to Dave after Ron then. So BJ, Ron, Dave. Well, uh, just with the conditions, obviously, the, the snow and having the couple weeks layoff and stuff, just to come out and you know get the win and, and go. You know, now you're going back to the championship game. What's it feel like? I mean, I think a lot of guys out here were just hyped to get out there and play a football game. You know, uh, been two weeks or however long since we, um, we've we been preparing for a team all week and then the game doesn't happen. And uh, the, the thing that I love about this team is that there's never any doubt. Um, we're just on to the next, on to the next game. And uh, that's what we did within this week. And, and shoot, I mean, uh, woke up this morning and, you know, still got good news that the game was on. And, and we went out there and just um, did what we could and got the dub. What was it like uh, with the snow, obviously, and, and just getting a chance, uh, you know, be, being a California kid to play in this kind of weather? And offensively, what did it do to you guys? Oh, my. I'm t I am don't think I've ever played anything like that before. Um, that much snow? I mean, it was tough. I think everybody in the world knows it's tough and that it's cold out there. But at the end of the day, everybody still has a football game to play. Um, we can't sit there and, and, and complain about the weather and, and forget about that. We still have to operate and, and execute our plays so we can uh, – end up with the dub and that's what we did the final thing for me Khalil just everything you guys went through this year with the cancellations and guys being out with COVID and all that to to be back in the championship game for the fourth year in a row what's that say about this team you said what's it like what's what's it say about the team and, and you guys ability to overcome some stuff this year and be back in the title oh, game again 
like I said before, I, this team never really there's ever, there's never any doubt. I mean, this team is always just pushing. We we keep pushing forward, and I think with that type of mentality, um, you know, um, only only we can stop ourselves. So when we're sitting there, and you know, all the crazy stuff that's going on. Um, we're just gonna control what we can control. You know, this this year is pretty crazy. Um, with everything going on, you never know who could be out, and guys got to step up in certain positions, and it's just tough overall. And um, this team, we just kept fighting, and, and I love these guys. And, um, you know, went out there and got the dub tonight, and then uh, we got a big week next week, so um, we're going to get after it tomorrow. Khalil, you guys knew you guys were in the championship game, whether you won this game or not, but to come out here and to fight through the odds, to fight through the snow, through the cold, what does it say about the de de determination of this team? There's never, there's never, no matter what condition, I think Coach Harrison always says it too. He, he'll he say, we'll play in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of the the um, the um location of the game and the weather or whatever it is, this team's going to go out there and we're going to give 100%. Um, we know at the end of the day, the job's not done yet. Um, we have a goal every season and, and we have that goal in our hands that we want to accomplish. Um, so we're going to right back to work tomorrow. Um, we haven't done anything yet. Nothing has been accomplished. We're going to get back to work tomorrow. Um, and then uh, execute and then go out next week and hopefully do what we can do. It's, it's not very often that Boise State, that, that one quarterback plays an entire game. Hank played today. You guys only had Chase there, you know, backing him up. How, how would you kind of, uh, how would you grade his performance today? Hank played tough. I mean, in these, condi in these conditions as a quarterback, I know, I mean, I know I wouldn't want to play there. And I think those, uh, he went out there and handled it very well. Um, and I think he, one thing he never did, um, there was no complaining the whole time. He, he obviously knew that it was, um, you know, the ball was going to be a little wet, you know, the snow, um, you know, affect his eyesight and all that type of stuff. He knew it all. He knew what he was getting himself into. And I think that's what um, he prepared himself well for this week, the whole week of preparation. Um, he knew what he, was, what he was getting into. So when he went out there today, um, it's like he knew it. And he, he just went out there and did his thing. And I think he handled it very well. Um, very high praise to him. Um, love that guy. And um, his confidence throughout the whole game and, and keeping the guys on track, the whole team offense, um, it's amazing what he can do. Thank you. Uh, Clearly, you mentioned it, it being difficult situation for Hank, but it, it's not easy for a wide receiver. But obviously you went out there and made a lot of plays. What was it about this game, about this situation, where you wanted to kind of – looked like you wanted to put this on your back a little bit? Um, I mean, I guess – Going out there, we were just kind of – as an offense, we just kind of talked this whole week. We were just kind of saying that um, the conditions are going to be tough and we don't know if we're going to have to just run the ball. Um, we, we don't know if we're just going to have to pass the ball. I mean, you never know within a football game. And the, the course that it was going, it was so, like, shaky. You know, it's kind of weird. Um, and then the snow really hit in the second half, and we're just like, oh, my goodness. Um, but it's like, okay, we still got – we got to have to play. And I know me personally um, – you know, I love when the ball's on my hands. I think everybody knows that. Um, so I just did what I can do um, whenever the ball was thrown my way to just um, keep the offense pushing. I know, you know, you keep referring to the one thing that matters is getting the win. But when you're able to do what you did tonight, you know, being able to contribute, you mentioned you don't know if you're going to pass or run. Well, you contributed in both facets. So when you have a game like that, what what does that mean to you to be able to be so responsible for the offense, you know, the offense doing what it did? I mean, I, I take I take that as a big responsibility, and I and I love when that type of uh, when guys are depending on, on me to do those type of things and and do what I do. Um, I love it. Um, so, I mean, I just go out there every every week and um, you know just try and do what I can to to make my brothers happy. You know, I think the most important thing to me um, is at the end of the game, I want to see them smiling because we got to win. And so I'm going to do what I can to make sure that that comes uh, true and, and, and that we go out there and just execute well as offense and defense so that we're all happy at the end of the night. My last quick one for you. I know I mentioned after the BYU game, I asked you about playing them again, and you were just it seemed like you were just a foregone conclusion that Khalil Shakir is going to be back in 2021. Is, is that something that you're just planning on being back next season? Or, or yeah, are you I'm planning on being back next season. Office? No, no, I'm planning on being back next season. I love it here, man. I, I love this team. I love these guys. Um, I'm ready to rock out with them again. See, that's a good, clear answer. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, How about say Sorry, you Jay Tost and then Rachel? Yeah, Jay and then Rachel. Well, just, uh, I mean, simply put, how, how eager and excited were you guys to play a football game today? 
Oh man, I know we woke up this morning and, and you can just see the smile on everybody's face and the look in everybody's eyes. And it was just different, man. It, I, I was telling um, my, my, my pops when I called him, it was kind of like, you know, first first game type vibes, you know, like we had played in two weeks and everybody's just so excited to go out there and play again. And that's really what it felt like. The energy was at an all time high all morning long and uh, all, all the time till uh, that led up to the game. It was just at all time high. And I think that um, with that type of energy, um, it obviously feels us to go out there um, and just just get a win. You know, what I'm saying um, we've been preparing for two weeks and not even playing a game. And then this week finally went through. And I think the best feeling was just stepping on the field and then them actually blowing the whistle to start the game, you know. Um, and obviously it, it went our uh, way um, the whole night and um, we got the dub. So it was amazing. Well, you know, you guys were supposed to play San Jose State you know, three weeks ago. You didn't get the chance to do that. There was some chatter after that game that people wanted to see that game happen. And now it's finally going to happen. How eager are you guys to, to face the Spartans uh, in seven days? I mean, we don't really listen to the chatter. We don't. I know I personally saw a lot of it on Twitter. A lot of guys saw it a lot on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Uh, we don't really pay attention to that type of stuff. Um, we don't respond to it. Um, we're just going to go out there and have a good week of practice and then go out there and do what we do best um, when the weekend hits. I know you had a big day today, Khalil, but um, how do you feel like Hank did? And especially that, that ball that he threw to you down the left sideline, the 33-yarder. I mean, yeah. you guys were going into a pretty good wind at that point in time, too. Yeah, I think that Hank tonight handled the, his position very well. What he did, um, the way he communicated the plays, um, just directing the offense as a whole, um, as a leader out there. Um, you know, that that play that he threw to me wasn't even supposed to be that type of route. And he made that adjustment and he put his trust in me to go out there and make the play. And he delivered a perfect ball. Um, so when he's delivered a perfect ball like that, I mean, all I can do is catch it. Right. And that's my job. So um, I think he handled the night very well. Um, you could just see that he's he's going to be a great leader. I mean, um, just the way he handles the offense. Um, I think tonight he, he played very well. And, and me personally, I think it was one of his better games since he's been here just because of the conditions we played in. So um, he did an amazing job. Oh, thanks, man. Good game. All right, thanks, Shaq. Appreciate it. Good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Hey, can you guys hey, hear me? Riley, you hear us okay? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you all right. Okay. Hey, Rachel, go ahead. I know we didn't get to you on Shaq, so I'll have you go first. So this is going to be awkward for you because it's an offensive question and you're on defense, but I'm asking you anyways because you watch them play. Um, you guys came into this game with an impressive streak in the red zone, going 16 for 16. You extended it to 18 for 18, but that streak ended in the second quarter. What do you think it took from your offense or what did they do to be able to make that streak last for so long? Because it was one of the few left in the nation. Yeah, I mean, as a defense, we have complete confidence in our offense. And no matter the situation that they're in, we know that we have guys that can go out there and change change the game. And so as a defense, you know, being able to being able to have that streak for our offense is awesome. And that that energy just continues to carry over and we definitely feel that on the defensive side of the ball. So that's, that's awesome that they can do that. And, you know, we appreciate them and all the work that they put in to be able to put themselves in a position to be successful in the red zone. So thank you. Go back, let's go back, BJ and then Ron. Yeah, Riley, uh, you know, what was it like just playing in the snow and then just the conditions and uh, you know, what was it like out there? Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. That was my first game in the snow, believe it or not. And it was so much fun. We we had a blast out there. Everybody did. Um, I could feel the energy on the sideline. And I mean, the last time we had that opportunity to play in a game like that was, I believe, the Mountain West Championship game against Fresno. And so we had a great time out there. And, you know, the energy out there was super, super good, super high. So it was awesome. It was fun. So you held them to 146 yards. They were two for 17 on you know, third down. I think they only completed four passes. Uh, obviously a dominant effort by you guys on defense. So what were you guys able to do in these conditions? Obviously that helped a little, but to have so much success. Yeah, I mean, as a defense, we, we had the mentality and, and we knew that coming into the game that 
that it, Wyoming had a great offense, that they had a great run game, and that they were going to try and pound the rock. And so we had the mentality going into the week that we needed to be physical. We needed to stop the run. And our coaches put us in a great position to be able to do that. And at the end of the day, we went out there and did our 111th, and we all executed. And that showed out tonight on the field. Riley, final one for me. I mean, you think about everything this team overcame this year, the two cancellations, guys being out with COVID, everything you guys have dealt with, to be back in the championship game for your fourth straight year. What does that say about this team? Man, I, I think it says a lot, first of all. Um, going back to, to 2015 when I was um, getting recruited and decided to commit to play here, um, you know, the, one of the main reasons was because of the tradition tradition that Boise State had had and the success that they'd had in the culture and and you know that that continues to go through the old guys continue to teach the young guys and that that culture is still within within Boise State and so being able to go out there and and do what we do and have that culture is awesome and we we love it and you know at the end of the day it showed out tonight Go ahead, Ron. So, Riley, uh, I, I think the only other time you guys might have been able to do this this year was the Colorado State game. But I saw at the end of the game, you guys went around and shook hands with the fans, you know, your usual tradition. How nice was it to be able to do that after a game like this? Man, that was awesome. Um, like you said, we haven't been able to do that in a long time, it feels like. And so to be able to go go around the stadium, give them high fives, it was awesome to see them, see their smiling faces. And, and you know, hopefully we can get back to that, you know, you know, in Boise State soon, sooner than later. But uh, it, it was awesome. And, I mean, even even when Wyoming fans started cheering, you know, it got, got the adrenaline going, and it was an awesome atmosphere, and we, we had a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, go ahead. How you going, Riley? Hey, how are you doing, Jay? Um, good, man. Hey, um. I know that your defense has been through a lot this year and, and new guys have had to step up throughout the course of this thing. You see Evan Tyler pl probably play more snaps than he's played in a couple of years tonight. Isaiah Banya came up with two sacks tonight. How cool is it to see some of these guys answer the call when you need them to? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, we, we have complete confidence in those guys. You know, we see them work day in and day out. And I believe the last time Ev started was 2018 but he stayed with it he's put in the work and you know through all the ups and downs he's he's been right there and you know hats off to him because that's that's difficult to do you know not not starting you know the last game starting in 2018 and then coming back 2020 you know that's awesome to him he didn't didn't miss a beat and to be able to finish the game with an interception was awesome and for Isaiah you know I love that kid he uh we have complete confidence in him. You know, before every game and in practice, I'm telling him how much confidence we have in him and how much, you know, the ability that he has. And so I, we love those guys and we we have complete confidence in them. Riley, what was different about tonight? There are games where you guys have struggled a little bit against the run this year, but Wyoming just wasn't able to get any type of momentum going uh, really throughout the entire evening. So what what was different about the defensive effort tonight? You know, there was an energy there and, you know, the mentality that we had going into the game, we, we knew what we were up against and we knew that we needed to stop the run. And we, we put in put in the time to, you know, study the film, um, you know, go 110% in practice. And that really paid off tonight. Everybody did their 111th. And I think that's, you know, that's what allowed us to be able to go out there and do what we did because, you know, it, it does take all 11. And if one one guy doesn't, prepare right one guy doesn't do their job then then you're you know you can't go out there and, and do that stuff so everybody did their job they executed and so you you, you love you love it when you see it so Probably one more for me and that you know I asked Khalil about this three weeks ago you guys were supposed to play San Jose State if that game got canceled Khalil said that even he saw some of the chatter on Twitter that that game didn't happen uh, did, did you see any of that and how, how eager are you guys to, to face San Jose State here in seven days Man, I mean, yeah, you hear hear a little bit about it, but at the end of the day, like we're we're pumped that we have the opportunity to play San Jose State. They're a great team, and you know they worked their butt off, and they deserve to be in the Mountain West Championship game. And so we're excited to go. You know, we're excited to go and face them this upcoming week, and we're going to do everything that we can to put ourselves in a successful position to be able to go out there and win. Riley, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Hey, Will, go ahead. 
Riley, for this team to make it back to your guys' fourth consecutive Mountain West Conference Championship game, what's it say about your guys' heart and resilience? Man, we, we have a lot of heart. Um, I mean, just over the, the years that I've been here, you know, this team has been through a lot of adversity and more so more so this year with everything that's going on. And, you know, you just never see the quit mentality or the give up mentality. It's always it's always keep pushing um, our backs against the wall. Keep pushing, you know, don't get up because don't give up because you never know what's going to happen. And, and it's, it's awesome to be able to be a part of a team that has that mentality. And yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You guys held them to 82 rushing yards. What was the key to your rush defense success today? The key to our rush defense today, I think the first, first just the physicality that we came into the game with. Um, I also believe that the time that we put in with our D-line and uh, linebackers and secondary to be able to stop the run definitely uh, paid off tonight. And to be able to hold do, you know, a team like Wyoming to that many rushing yards is awesome. And, you know, there's still there's still things that we need to do. Uh, there's still things that we need to watch uh, in regards to film and and get better at. But um, very satisfied with how we came out and how everybody played. Thanks, Riley. Yeah, thank you, Will. Does anybody else who hasn't gone have a question? Okay, how about follow ups for Riley? Anybody? Yeah, I, I got one. If that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey. Um, Riley, I know that he plays on the other side of the ball. Is he still here? Can I see him. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, I know that he play, I know that he plays on the other side of the ball. But Khalil said tonight that he's planning on coming back in 2021. I know that I don't know if there was much speculation in the locker room about that, but uh, what, what does that mean to this program that he's going to be back for another year? Man, to have a guy like Khalil come back for another year—that's awesome. I mean, anytime you have a guy like that, you want to keep him around as long as you can. He. He is, you know, he's got so much potential. He is super athletic and he makes plays all the time. So anytime you can get a guy like that to say again, you know, stay another year is awesome. So, you know, hats off to him, pumped for next year. It'll be awesome. But, I mean, as of right now, we're looking forward to the Mountain West Championship game <laughs> in San Jose. I'm, I'm, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> all righty, thanks, Jay. Appreciate it, Riley. Thanks very much. All righty, thank you guys. Take care. If anybody cares, Florida's getting beat right now. This game doesn't matter for Florida, though, right? They're already in. Well, I'm saying can't they can the CFP, right? Oh, okay. yeah, good point. I'm saying if they lose tonight, I don't know if beating Alabama helps them is what I'm saying. Wait, are they, they're losing? That's what I'm saying. They're down to LSU right now in the third quarter, like 27-24. Oh, I, I think they just scored then. <laughs> uh, I think they scored to get within three, didn't they? They were down 10. No, they're up, they're up 31-27. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm behind the score. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it, Dave. I wish if Colorado would – UCLA's or USC's down 11 right now. Yeah, that's the one I'm watching. They were down ah. eight. It's too bad that uh, Colorado was down thirteen nothing to Arizona. I don't think they were going to be uh, much of a true hope for anybody. <laughs> who? So. I mean, it's the Pac-12 this year. <laughs> who, who? Who is hope? <laughs> I mean, like honestly, you can trace back as soon as Landman got hurt. That's when things went to shit. Yeah. I don't know who that is. I'm not even gonna lie, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nate Landman, first first team All America linebacker. Hey, La Lavisca Chenault. His brother's really good. Oh, okay. How about Jerry Rice's son? 81 yard punt return touchdown, 61 yard pass. Really? That's kind of cool. Yeah. God, imagine being Jerry Rice's son and playing that same position. I know. That, that's just gotta suck. Yeah. <laughs>
Abija, how'd they get everybody up into the uh, press box there today? Did it take forever? Uh, yes, it's the first elevator in history, and then it's like it was like two or three people maximum per time. So didn't leave once we got up here, thankfully. Yeah. And they brought in like portable space heaters because it's really cold up here. Sure. 
Hey, I'm sorry to keep you guys waiting. This has been kind of a crazy time trying to get out of here. Um, these roads are getting slick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my computer and I'm going to jump on the bus and we're going to do harsh basically from the bus on Zoom if you guys are cool with that. Good. Okay. I'll mute this. Stop it. Just hang tight. I'm, I'm really sorry to keep you guys waiting. You guys hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you just fine, coach. Okay. All right. Well, that was uh, that was a tough game. The weather conditions certainly were a factor in this one, and Wyoming played hard like they always do. We expected that. I thought it was it was uh, more difficult to throw the ball as the game went on, and I think for both sides we saw that. Uh, really, the key to the game became field position with special teams. We we did some things on special teams that were good. We did some things that were not good, and I don't believe we didn't win the turnover battle tonight. We still found a way to win the game, uh, and. You know, I told our guys, proud of them. This was a this was a tough travel. We've been off for a couple of weeks, and going into this one, we wanted to earn the opportunity to play in that championship game, which we did tonight. And some of it wasn't pretty. We know that, but that's football, and certainly it is in the conditions that we played in. Wyoming, credit to them. They they played hard. Um, the quarterback, you know, was injured uh, earlier in the week or that last game. So I don't know what he had to overcome to play in that game, but uh, they showed toughness as well. And, you know, we were out. Uh, we had some guys that were out, some key players, um, had some staff and different things that, you know, other staff members had to step up this week. So there was a lot of stuff that, that went into this game plan and preparation that just under the circumstances with COVID and, and everything became – uh, a very large challenge, and we were still able to find a way to get it done. So proud of our guys. We'll celebrate it for 24 hours. Uh, right now our goal is just to get home at this point and that our travel is safe and everybody makes it. And That's the goal. That's the focus right now. Once we get home, we'll, we'll discuss this game. We'll watch it. Uh, we'll put it to rest, and then we'll move on to San Jose State, which we had a little bit of a taste as far as preparation goes for them. And – Congratulations to them. They've had a tremendous season undefeated, and they put themselves in the championship game, and we're looking forward to playing them. So, questions? PJ, go ahead. Coach, defensively to hold them to 82 yards rushing, uh, only 146 total yards. They were two for 17 on third down. Uh, you know, what does it say about your guys? I know the conditions may have played a part in that, but to dominate the way you guys did on defense. Yeah, our defense stepped up. I thought those guys – really played well, uh, especially up front. Their tailbacks are very good. Uh, their number six came in and played. I, I know that he's a very good player. 
we'll see him again. And I thought our front seven did a really good job. We tackled well. Uh, we were able to do some things in the back end. I think they hit one play over the middle on us early on. And then after that, uh, our coverage was, was very good. It was tight all night long. And, you know, the defense, a lot of credit to them. And in a game like this, you want to see your defense really step up. And they were able to do that. And it was a physical game up front. And those guys came through. In a weird 2020 like this, having the cancellations, having guys miss games due to COVID, just everything you guys have had to overcome this year to be in the championship game again for, for four straight years now. Uh, what, what does it say just about this team, what you guys have done this year? Well, for the consistency piece, it says a lot about the players that have been in this program. And a lot of these guys have been a part of those teams. And I, and I think these guys have standards. They, they really... They have standards every year. They set for themselves in the off season. They work through the summer and into fall camp. And as the season begins, the goal is to put ourselves in this game and to play for a championship. And these guys have been able to do it this year. And, and 2020, with all the factors, uh, been so many things these guys have gone through. And certainly to be back in this game right now, we just want to finish. Uh, and there's going to be things that probably change this next week before we get into the championship game. So every day, every day is, is uh, an adjustment. Every day is, is trying to, like we talked about, be amazing problem solvers. And these guys have been able to do it. Uh, one thing, you know, more than just the football piece, these guys have learned to cope with a lot of things. And, and we certainly know that there's a lot of people that are worse off than we are. And I, and I hope the example of what we're able to do on the field can give you know people some hope and some inspiration and, we want to finish and go play against San Jose State and try to win another championship. That's the goal. Ron, go ahead. Coach, uh, Hank comes out and his first pass of the game is an interception. How did you see him respond for that? And, and how would you grade his performance the rest of the way? Yeah, we, we, we planned that just to challenge him, right? <laughs> just to get him going. So uh, they did a good job. They changed their coverage. Uh, they changed their coverage kind of uh, on the snap and he misread it. It's what it comes down to, and they made the play on it. But he came back, and, and the, the thing about Hank is, you know, guys make mistakes, and he accepts it, understands what, what it was that needs to improve, and then he's able to come back out there and execute and, and drive us down the field and score. We answered back once we did that, and then as the conditions just got worse, it became more difficult to really cut it loose. We, we were – more conservative on third downs uh, rather than throwing it like like we normally do in certain situations. We were running it, and that because that was because of the factors of the of the weather. And so, Hank did a good job tonight. He he played hard. Uh, he took some shots, and you know, that's what I love about Hank. He shows tremendous toughness, and and he's able to overcome things. That's that's at that position, you can get upset and down very easily because there's a lot that put, is on your shoulders. And certainly the first throw out there, you throw a pick. Hey, you got to get back in there. We need you. And he was he was the guy tonight, and he he was able to do that and lead his team and found a way to win. So that's that's what it comes down to, and and that's that's what it takes. That's part of playing that position. Sometimes you win games like this, and maybe from an offensive standpoint, it was ugly at times. But in those conditions, it's hard to play quarterback. Your hands are cold, and things are you know not really going that well early on in downs and you got to throw it at times and we missed a couple throws but we made some good ones too we were able to convert some third downs and, and there were some big time plays in there so hey that was part of the game and, and we overcame it answered back and were able to win and we saw chase active for the first time this season uh was that just an emergency emergency situation with all the other quarterbacks out or was he actually healthy enough to play um He's he's able to play, but it's an emergency situation is what it was. And, you know, we got some other answers uh, where guys can step up and play, too. It's not ideal at all to go into a game like that. Um, but Chase is a team player and he had himself ready to go for what it, whatever it was that we needed him to do. And fortunately, tonight we didn't need that. Hank was able to to finish the game, which, you know, under the conditions, that's Probably not a situation I hope we'll ever be in again. All right, as we get into the 21 season and beyond, but it is what it is this year. And in your opening statement, you alluded to uh, some staff missing some time. Did any coaches or staff members not make the trip tonight? We had some coaches out.
yeah, we had some coaches out, we had some staff out and, you know, there were, there were some position groups where other coaches stepped up and position groups really uh, coached themselves and managed themselves throughout the game. And, but that's, that's part of it. We're not, you know, that's happened across the country and it just, it is what it is. And when that happens, uh, I'll tell you what, it, that's not normal. We, we've never really been through that because you always have staff, right? Players in normal seasons get injured and things happen. Um, it's tough. I can tell you that it's tough. And uh, I was proud of our guys to step up, uh, the ones that needed to. And, and we had some of our players that were stepping up too and doing some of the things that our coaches normally do. That's the beauty of the guys that are on this team is if there's a role that, that they can fill, then a lot of guys are stepping up and willing to do that. And, Tonight was one of those examples. Can you tell us which coaches were out? I'd rather not. Thank you. Jay, I got time for one more, then I got to let Coach go. Um, well, if, if that's the case, um, Brian, in, in a game where passing conditions were far from ideal, how, how did Hank you know, handle going into the wind some of those times? And then Khalil has 105 receiving yards in those conditions. And I don't know if you know this, uh, I'll, I have to credit Dave for this, but uh, Khalil says he's planning on coming back in 2021. I don't know if you have confirmed that yet, but I'm assuming that's music to your ears. I've prayed about it often. <laughs> yes. Uh, but no, I haven't had that conversation. I, we haven't had that conversation with, with any of our guys. We're so focused on it right now. And, and just to be fair to everyone, um, I think everybody knows what Khalil means to this football team. He's a captain for a reason. Uh, he's obviously a tremendous football player. And, you know, those are his decisions. You know, I, I, will, I will do whatever is best for our players, and I support him. Uh, you know, we obviously want him on this team and, and a lot of guys, but we haven't had that conversation. There's just so many factors right now that, that we have to sit down once the season's over and, and figure out because what's been put upon us is something that no one's ever dealt with. And rather than just trying to rush into it, we got to really think about it. And, and it's not just my decisions, the players' decisions too. And right now our focus has been on what do we do to get ourselves into each game every week uh, and prepared so we can go win that game. And, and the focus was Wyoming. We hadn't played in a couple of weeks. Uh, I think some of that too, we had to knock the rust off a little bit. And certainly that showed up tonight. Uh, we'll be better once we play in the next one against San Jose State. And I think there was a lot of things in this game. I hope we got out of our system so that we're going to be, we will be better when we go play again. But, you know, for as far as our players go and the guys on this football team, it's 2020. And I'm only focused on 2020 and what these guys set out to accomplish. And to me, I think that's the most fair thing to do at this point is just to stay focused on that. And then some of these guys just let them finish the way they want to finish and, and not get caught up in all the other stuff. Thanks, Brian. Safe travels. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Coach, appreciate it, Coach. Safe travels. Okay, thanks, thanks guys. Coach. Appreciate it. Bye, friends. See you guys.